Hi guys and welcome to another Hero of the Week. This week's hero is Taj Ali, an historian and political activist. Now the topic of a wealth tax or even a cap on wealth was raised during the Politics Live show and Taj made a brilliant point here. So much suffering exists when there is a cap on how much welfare people can receive and we know this has resulted in the poorest in society growing more and more dependent on food banks and on charities. So why not have a cap on what the richest in society can have? Is this an idea you could support, limiting an individual's wealth at £10 million? Um, Well, I'd need to read the book and think about it, but I think it's really good that we're having this debate because too often we tend to focus on the poorest in society. We talk about benefit caps for people who don't have very much. Um, We know there's been deaths linked to cuts to uh, welfare. We've never heard about a significant number of deaths linked to people uh, having their wealth capped or having uh, paying a higher rate of taxation. And so I think when we think about where we are as a society today, mm. uh, you've got these oligarchs buying up property in central London and using it as speculative bubble. And at the same time, you've got people on the streets homeless. I mean, clearly there is a moral argument around redistribution of wealth. And I think we're not doing enough redistribution. We pretend we've got no money. We don't talk about taxing the wealthiest in society. And that is something that's supported um, by the vast majority of the British public. Poll after poll has demonstrated that the British public do support. Um, I think there was a poll by YouGov which found that if you have assets over 10 million, which is a mm. similar figure to what we're discussing here, I think it was over 70% would support a higher rate of tax. I mean, I think a lot of people support higher rates of tax on people. Mm. People who aren't them um, and are surprised sometimes to find that it is them um, who would be caught up, rightly or mm. wrongly. Um, but in terms of inequality, reducing inequality, would this work? Could this work? I think so. I think, you know, it depends where that money goes. But as I said, like, I worked in a factory. I used to do 12 hour night shifts. I worked in a takeaway. I worked in a call center. I wasn't paying a higher rate of tax. Now I'm doing a bit better for myself and I'm paying a bit more. And it doesn't affect me. It doesn't massively impact me. And that's what we need to look at. Right. The disparity between the poorest in society, it affects them because they're picking between heating and eating. We've got record numbers using food banks. We've got people really struggling with their health and the inequalities associated, okay. uh, uh, you know, the health inequalities associated All right, let- with the wealth divide. Claire. Wonderful, wonderful. Couldn't have said it better myself. So there are a number of things to respond to here. Um, the, the media tend to focus on the poorest in society and they believe that, well, there should be caps on how much people, how much welfare people receive in order to change their behavior. This is the, the policy from government. We need to cap, to cap benefits in order to force more people into the job market. Now, of course, that is not working. Many people can't work. Many people, it's for them, it's no longer feasible to work. So they have to rely on benefits. But notice we never talk about increasing taxation to change the behavior of the rich. The response, of course, from the rich and their supporters in politics is, well, if you tax the rich more, they'll leave the country or they'll move their, their money into offshore bank accounts. There's a massive problem with that. You know, <laughs> in the 1940s, 1950s in the U.S., the highest rate of tax was above 90%. And very rich people didn't move out of the, U- the US or they didn't move uh, their money out. When it comes to assets, most of the, the wealth is, is in assets. So you can't liquidate those assets overnight and it's very difficult to move that money out of the country. So it's scaremongering when they say that the richest will leave. And they also try to push this idea of uh, trickle-down economics. If we if the richest people in society earn more money, if they're able to make more money, then it's all going to trickle down to the poorest. And we've seen that that has been an absolute failure, an abject failure over the last number of decades. Another point that was raised by Taj is that the richest are buying up property and this is making it impossible for young people, for example, to get on the property ladder. It's driving more and more people into a situation where they have to rent or they have to live with their parents or ultimately driving them onto the street and into homelessness. So that has to be dealt with. Now, for the Labour Party taking over, they have to introduce a wealth tax because how else are are they going to be able to grow the economy and fund public services? Because if they, if they do a round of quantitative easing, this is going to devalue the currency and it's, all, it's going to make imports more expensive. And the UK relies heavily, especially when it comes to food, on, on imports. So this is going to make the life of ordinary people more difficult. Um, borrowing is expensive. And the other alternative, of course, is austerity. 
and we saw the disaster of austerity and what it's done. So the other alternative has to be a wealth tax. And it's estimated that it would bring in between 100 and 150 billion pounds to the exchequer. That money could be used to hire doctors and nurses, to retain doctors and nurses, to bring doctors and nurses in from abroad. Why is that important? Because if the NHS is able to bring down the waiting list, it means fewer people are going to be on that waiting list and fewer people are going to be off sick. So they can actually re uh, re-enter the job market, work again, and they can help grow the economy. So I think the fundamental issue has to be the NHS and the waiting lists. Because if you bring that down, you're going to have more people working. And of course, reforming the immigration system, allowing more people to come in, issuing more visas or whatever, ultimately the, the greatest would be to rejoin the European Union, the single market, and re res uh, restore freedom of movement. But in the short term, they have to retain doctors and nurses, bring down the waiting list, get more and more people who are all sick into the job market so you can help grow the economy. But I can, there is, a, there is an easy way to achieve that and it's through a wealth tax. And as was pointed out here, the vast majority of people support that. Even multi-millionaires and billionaires, some of them support that as well. Let me know in the comment section, guys, what do you think? As always, your comments are greatly appreciated. Thanks a lot.